Welcome to another episode of Profiles in Leadership. Thank you for VGM Advantage for sponsoring this. I'm your host, Steve Anderson, and we have a great guest today, David Qualls. David is the owner of Rehab Institute, providing rehabilitation services in Southwest Louisiana. David received his BS degree in physical therapy from Louisiana State University Medical Center in New Orleans, Louisiana in 1974. Immediately after graduation, David began his career at West Calcasieu. Calcasieu, thank you for helping me, Cameron Hospital in Sulphur, Louisiana. Five years later, David decided to leave the hospital setting and open up a private practice. He still operates the practice and treats patients each day. Volunteer services has always been a part of David's career. He is also an Eagle Scout. He has served the Louisiana Physical Therapy Association in many positions, including as its president. He received the LPTA David Warner Physical Therapist of the Year Award in 2003. He received the Lucy Blair Service Award in 2014 from APTA. David has been a delegate and a chief delegate of the APTA House of Delegates over the past 25 years. Qualls was honored with the Robert C. Dicus Award given by the Private Practice Section in 2016. David also represented LPTA on the Louisiana Legislature Patient Access Resolution and helped the passage of recent patient access to physical therapy legislation in Louisiana. David Qualls and his wife Cindy still reside in Sulphur, Louisiana. Their children, Joshua and his son, Dre, along with uh, Callie, husband, Jordan, and daughter, Ansley, live in Sulphur as well. Small town, still all the family there. Thanks for being here today. Thank you very much. So, you know, I'll just jump right in. You appear to me to still have all the passion, the excitement to keep doing what you're doing. What keeps you going so, so strong all these years? Uh I, I guess it was, I was just uh, born into a volunteer service, you know, I, yeah. uh, even back in school, you know, I was, I was a guy that was in clubs, you mm -hmm. know, and I served at that level and just, you know, as I moved from high school into college and, you know, then into to active practice, it was just, that was a part, you know, of me. I, uh, I think that where maybe a lot of other people uh, had hobbies that mm -hmm. they did uh volunteer service is my hobby you know and yeah. uh, where i live a lot of people don't understand that because i'm in the hunting fishing capital of the world yeah but uh volunteer service is just so how big a fun. town is uh, sulfur louisiana sulfur is about twenty-five thousand people okay and the the uh, rural area around it is probably an additional twenty thousand so we have a service area, you know, mm -hmm. probably 40,000 people. You probably know most of them. Pretty, I do. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. Time. I wouldn't doubt it at all. So tell me the story. When you gave your DICA speech last year, I love the story how um, you were a physical therapist, and I'm paraphrasing, so fill in the blanks, but you're a physical therapist, treating patients, enjoying what you're doing. But you went home to your wife and you said, I'm, I'm just not reaching enough people. I just need to do something else. So you actually considered. Uh, maybe going back and, and going to seminary school. Is that right? So tell us a story. I, you know, I, uh, faith base has, has been there for me for many, many years. I, I, I actually uh, walked away, away from my first call to ministry mm -hmm. when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. And I avoided that for probably almost 25 years. And then 1992, uh, I had the opportunity to attend a retreat and receive that call again. Mm -hmm. And even though I didn't answer that call to full-time ministry as I envisioned what full-time ministry was, I, in addition to association activities, I just became tremendously involved you know, mm -hmm. in ministry within the state, within mm -hmm. that retreat group, uh, which Cindy and I became Louisiana chairpersons of that. Mm -hmm. After that, it led to a prison ministry, which I became a Louisiana chairman for that. And that, you know, outside service and ministry outside mm -hmm. of practice continued to grow. 
Probably that that's exactly right. You know, about 20 years ago, mm -hmm. I, you know, I just I got to that point mm -hmm. to where uh, I just wasn't wasn't feeling fulfilled mm -hmm. in the clinical setting anymore. You know, even though I, I realized early in my career that um, the opportunity to just sit and visit and touch people was magnificent mm -hmm. magnificent and it, it and it had great results you know to people but still something wasn't there yeah and and that's when the consideration to leave the practice of physical therapy and enter into full-time ministry mm -hmm. was there i over the years have had the opportunity to speak i've had the opportunity to preach mm -hmm. um but up until this particular point, it was never a consideration at full time. And that was during that time was when was having that consideration. And that's when Cindy told me, she says, David, you're in ministry all day, every day. Yeah. So, you know, it's, so, it's what you do. So yeah. it's like, are you in the pulpit preaching? No. Mm -hmm. But do you have an opportunity to touch people? Mm -hmm. Yes, you do. So, and you are able to touch them in a way that many other people yeah. don't have that opportunity. Put it in a different perspective, and when you look at it through a different lens, it's like, man, you're doing a lot. How much more can you do, right? It's Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, you know, yeah I mean, that's so cool. Well, you've been around a while, so what advice would you give to a new professional entering the profession now? Well, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still excited. You know about the profession, and, and I'm really excited about the future. I sure don't have all the answers, you mm -hmm. know, as to where the future is going to go. But I think that for that new graduate that's coming out, the opportunities for them are much greater mm -hmm. than when I came out 43 years ago. The uh, availability for different types of practice settings are wide open for them mm -hmm. uh, and it was pretty limited mm -hmm. back during that time I mean yeah. you didn't have a whole lot of choices you know back f for us so you know I just you know you know I would I, I just think that they need you know a new graduate needs to just look at a, at a lot of different options you know and 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 choose one I mean mm -hmm. I didn't stay where I was you yeah. know after five years I changed so if they get in a setting right there uh, in practice and it's not about them and it's not for them, mm -hmm. then move on because they'll never develop their fullest capacity until they find you know, that, that place yeah. that they need to practice. Right. You know? So if you could snap your fingers and just change something in our profession today, what would it be? Uh, I guess I, I would love for us to be, I would love for the public to be able to recognize how much we, what we do. The how value. Good, the that. value that we have right mm -hmm. there. And, and it's there, you know, but, but we just can't, can't get it. Yeah, you think we're getting there? Is it getting part. better? Is it, well, what do people in your community, I mean, do you see them seeing it in a different way or is it just like, because, because you know, we're both physical therapists, so we kind of drink the Kool Aid. But it's kind of yeah. like, how can you not see this? I mean, you know, we're we're providing this value, and and it seems like they just don't get it. I I, I think that it's, I, I think that it is getting better, and it's not all um, everybody else's fault. You yeah. know, some of it is is us too. You know, you know, in the way that we've chosen to promote what we do. Either yeah. we have or we haven't, or we mm -hmm. hadn't done it to the fullest extent, you know, that, that we need to do. Yeah. I think that uh, as we're now at that point, you know, of, of being almost totally fully integrated in direct access across the United States, mm -hmm. I think that's helped, yeah. you know, and it's going to help. It's helped us in Louisiana just in one year, you know, that's happening. But, and I think that that now forces us to look at that consumer more 
And that's the individual that we need to direct our attention to, Mm -hmm. not necessarily a referral source any longer, even though we still want that, Mm -hmm. even though, and and to some degree, you still want to nurture that referral uh, model. Still, we've got to, we've got to take that step up, you know, and go directly to that consumer, I think, before we will. You know, I, I, I look back and I think that, you know, over a period of time with all the data that we've collected, you know, and the majority of that is all positive about the benefits of physical therapy. Mm-hmm. But still, it's not being perceived yeah. in a way that it should be, you know. So, you know, we've, we've got work to do there, you yeah. know, and I'm ready for us to be there yeah. because I'm frustrated that yeah. we've had to gather all that information for so many years. And it's, yeah. we, we still don't have any believers. Yeah, you know? I mean, after a long time, that's for sure. I know that, you know, being in the profession that long, we've seen it obviously improve and it's gotten so much better and the opportunities are better, but there's some things like that that just, man, you think, man, we've talked about this 30 years ago. You know, That's so exactly it's, a, it's, it's a, it, it takes a lot of patience. So what's your, when you get up in the day, uh, you know, and, and head off to, to do your thing in the PT world and in your business, what's your biggest challenge you face today? Well, I, I think, in, 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 and I look at it as, as a positive. Fortunately for me, I'm at the end of the spectrum, you right, know, right. instead of at the beginning of the spectrum. So, you know, I, I can have a different perspective, you know, yeah. over, over what that I do, over what I do. Um, the, and, and even in the, the practice setting that I'm in now, you know, I, I still go to the clinic four days a week and I still treat patients four days a week. Uh, I, 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 I do have the benefit now of not starting till about 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> nice. So I love that, yeah, you know, yeah. but I go as late as I need to. But it's, it's, it's still the frustration of uh, reimbursement, uh-huh. you know, as to the effort that physical therapists put into to their work, the effort that we put in to the individuals. And, it, you know, even though the makeup, the personal makeup of most physical therapists, you get a lot of feedback and you get, uh, you, you know, just a lot of reward mm-hmm. from that. Yeah, we have to we have to be reimbursed to survive, you know, sure. yeah. and it's and it's just not there. I mean, yeah. in in our industry, right there, when you look at where we, for me, you know, over forty three years of practice now, there's not many professions that receive less than they did forty years ago on a percentage basis. Mm-hmm. I mean. You know, you start out and I'm billing $25 for a visit, and, but I'm getting $25, you <laughs> yeah, know? exactly. Yeah. So, you know, from a percentage standpoint, I, you know, you, you get 100% for what you bill. Now, that's yeah. not there, you know? And then at the same time when, as everybody knows, as those costs have continuously increased for us to be able to provide that service, Yeah the amount that we get has, you know, has gotten less. So, you know, those are the frustrations in addition to, you know, those, like I said, the costs are there and, mm-hmm. and the, even, even in the small, very small setting that I'm in now, it's unbelievable uh, the amount of time that is spent on the phone justifying mm-hmm. what we do to be able to get that amount that we can get, you know, yeah, it's yeah. just. It, yeah, that makes it hard. That definitely makes it hard. So being in that practice for that long, I'm curious, what patient is, has uh, been your patient the longest? Do you know who it is? Uh, I mean, not maybe continuously, but you know, over the years, come back and whatever. Uh, yeah, yes, unfortunately, that individual mm-hmm. has passed away. Oh, okay. You know, but he was probably uh, an individual that was a patient for almost 30 years. Yeah. So, you know, it was, he, he, um, was a spinal nerve injury. Yeah. You know, and, uh, 
So he just, just keep coming back when he had absolutely. to and go on his own. You know, we and come treated back. a regular basis for a while. We worked a lot, mm -hmm. you know, on on trying to do some recruitment in the early early years, yeah. you know. But then it was mainly for stretching and motion and yeah. trying to adapt as his condition was deteriorating, you know, trying yeah. to adapt his his physical capabilities so he could remain functional as much yeah. as he did. And and he lived much, much longer yeah. than most people would, you know, in, yeah. in that particular setting just been. because he he, he he was just such a driver. It must mean, have been like losing a family member. Oh, when he passed it, away. Was, yeah. it was. It, it was. So, uh, I also uh, know that um, uh, back in the early '90s, I think, or sometime, and that's uh, you actually went and tried a new business venture, and then ran against <laughs> the Balanced Budget Act and had to reshift. So, uh, tell us a little bit about that, and what did you learn from that experience? We, you know, it, it's funny, and 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 that 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 experience was 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 neat, you know, and even looking back on it now, you know, and and. Even today, even though that happened, you know, there was a huge amount of disappointment, but there's no bitterness there or whatever. My, yeah. my, myself and four other physical therapists had just kind of, st we each had our own practice. Mm -hmm. And then we started a little, little contracting business mm -hmm. on the side, you know, and then that just continued to grow and, and we got opportunities. And the first thing we knew, we had 30 locations in five states. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem was with that is that during that particular time, we were taking advantage of the Gerald site business. Mm -hmm. And we were kind of too heavily leveraged on that side, you know, versus where we might have been with the private clinic side or yeah. the hospital contracting side. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, 1997, yeah. when the Balanced Budget Act came came out, we were probably about everything was done, the paperwork was almost completed, and we were about 30 days from a public offering. Really? For this for this oh business my right gosh. there, oh my and gosh. the Balanced Budget Act came and it just overnight was gone. Ever, overnight, overnight it was all gone, and we kind of all went back to our little <laughs> yeah. little practices and, and, and you know. So what did you learn from that? Well, you know, we, number one was, you know, mm. w watch the balance of your contract for sure, you <laughs> yeah. know, because we got too, we, we got heavily leveraged, you know, right. on that Gerald Psych deal, which was heavily leveraged all, all toward Medicare, you know, yeah. and, and the Balanced Budget Act just, you know, took that away. You know, the, the, the clinical sites we were able to maintain until we pretty much one by one, you know, found we at, at that particular point and after after that time, uh, I don't I don't think that we were ready to to just manage just the the practices at that particular point. So we kind of uh, were able to uh, gradually one by one sell those away, you know, yeah. so that we could at least walk away with going upside down, you know, yeah. at that particular yeah. point. But uh, tough times. But it was, yeah. it, it was. But yeah. you know that, you know, we survived. You know, yeah. everybody went back home and everybody just dug in because even with you know what was going on with that particular business during that time, each of us were that kind of local office was kind of still our place of report, mm -hmm. but we had a corporate office during that time. And we just kind of went back to that little, <laughs> we, you know, because we, we all had kind of walked away and had some different positions within this new business. And uh, yeah, it, it was time to where we had to kind of downsize and we unfortunately had to, lay off a few people, you know, mm -hmm. so that we would have a position back in those practices yeah. individually right then. Yeah. But, a, you know, uh, that's when you step out there and you, you take a chance with the government, then sometimes, yeah, sometimes, sometimes, you sometimes lose. it goes, sometimes yeah. you lose, you know. Now, without saying 
God or Jesus. So living or dead, who would you love to have an hour sit down conversation with if you could be anybody? You know, the, uh, I, uh, I don't, I, I don't, just with, within the field of physical therapy, I'll tell you that one of, one of, uh, a, 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 a tremendous amount of, of my success, I think, today was, it, I can go back and, and I can relate a six week time that I had in Columbus, Georgia with George McCluskey. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I saw Mr. McCluskey, the way he worked, the way he interacted with people, uh, the way he dealt with issues or whatever. And I left there and really that, even though I went back and started practicing in that hospital setting, for over five years, that was really that was really my motivation mm -hmm. to go there because of the way that that practice that that practice was ahead of their time. Yeah, back in the '70s. Yeah, and even though I was able to keep up with Mr. McCluskey over a period of time mm -hmm. and know kind of what was going on or whatever. I never took that opportunity to go back and just sit down with him. Number one, to thank him, yeah. you know, for what he had right. done, and number two, just to, just, just to, to kind of uh, get a little pearl from him, you yeah. Know, yeah, or whatever. So yeah. I mean, he was just a, you know, even mm -hmm. with just that short period of time that I was with him, mm -hmm. he stayed with me, you know, throughout throughout my career, you know. Yeah. And even now, you know, I. Uh, I have the opportunity, you know, to have relationship with his daughter, you know, and, and son-in-law and, yeah. and know them and visit with them. So right. I've even been able to keep up, you know, yeah. and friends that work in that practice. So, you know, but, you know, after he died, I thought, man, yeah. I wish I had I wish the done that. Yeah. just to visit a little bit. So, right you know, I, um, you know, we both have a friend in Patrick and, and Susan. And uh, so I met uh, Mr. McCluskey. Um, one time, uh, only really one time that I really talked to him. And as you know, he was kind of, you know, going downhill a little bit. But I walked in, and and, <laughs> and from my West Coast, you know, uh, he, he said something to me, and it was in that slow Southern drawl. I looked at Patrick, and I said, "What? What did he say?" <laughs> and Patrick goes, "He said, he said, y you got legs like Earl Campbell." And I go, "Is that a good thing?" And he goes, for Mr. McCluskey, it is. I go, okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. Absolutely. That he was, so uh, as Patrick said, a very Southern gentleman and uh, somebody who, uh, you know, made, made a lot of difference in a lot of people's lives. And I think he did. Yeah, yes, yeah, that's, that's great. Well, it's, it's cool that you got that early experience Absolutely. with him. Absolutely. You know, and, I, yeah. and like I said, I, you know, I, I don't know of, you know, anybody that's out there that's, that was, you know, in the big yeah. and, in, in famous venue, uh, you know. I think the thing that uh, maybe some of our younger listeners uh, might not appreciate, because, you know, as, as you know, I had experience in a company with Jim McKillop, who was a peer of Mr. McCluskey. And um, to, to be able to do what they did in the pioneer days of, of private practice PT, I mean, hearing some of those stories, how they couldn't even get a business license, everybody thought they were crazy, and they had to deal with everyone thing, and all they cared about was money, and you know, all these things. So to persevere and continue to do what they did in those times, I think is even more impressive when you put it in that perspective. You know, I totally agree, Steve. Yeah. Yeah, that's huge. What they did was huge. I yeah. mean, you, when, when, when I was in PT school, you didn't really talk about wanting to go into private practice right because that was like a no-no just because yeah. of what you said right there yeah you if, if that's your goal your goal is about the dollar only yeah has absolutely nothing to do with patient care which is so false yeah. but that was that was the, that, was that, was the, the that was the perspective and that so to, many people had then and you they know? had to they had to overcome that and you know it's hard enough as you know to build a private practice and start from scratch and build it from the ground up 
uh, and to do that and be judged in that light, I, I just think back and uh, we, we didn't have it that bad. No, <laughs> I mean, no, yeah, no, so. no. I mean, you know, yeah. when, 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 when I chose to, 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 to go into private practice, um, I was still single, you know, and, and figured yeah. out. I basically was making a thousand dollars a month. Yeah. You know, so it was like, look, all I have to do is see enough patients to equal to what I have now, (laughs) and I can cover everything that I want. Well, at that particular point, my really my parents, the way that they were raised or whatever, couldn't understand really why I would leave. Yeah. A good, stable, that solid job, you know, yeah. job yeah. to take a chance, and it just so happened that I, I had an uh, uncle that was kind of more of the business-minded, yeah. you know, than, and and it was my uncle that really touched base with my parents, you know, that said it's going to be okay, yeah. he'll be okay, he'll do okay, you know. Yeah. So I mean, but that's great. But, that's yeah. great. Now, did you or your parents were they? Uh, uh, what did they do? Were they college educated? Did they start uh, my, my, meager my, means? My dad was not. My dad worked from from mobile oil, mm-hmm. you know, and probably when he un, un, unfortunately he, he passed away on the job, you know. But mm-hmm. that was like when he had been with them for forty years. Yeah, you know, my mom was a junior college graduate and kind of worked in the clerical side up until the time my sister was born, and then. She was a stay-at-home mom until after I went to college, and yeah. then she went back to work, you know, just so she'd have something to do, you know. Yeah. But that was it. Their their values were there, and yeah. their idea was that you, yeah. you know, credit cards were not available then, right. so you only spent what you had, and you made sure that all your bills were paid every month, you know. And, and it was the it was that. the mentality that you go to work for this one company, you stay there your career, you get a pension, and life is good. Absolutely. Yeah. So. But at that same time too, you know, just as 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 I think that has definitely changed in the workplace today, um, just as an employee would dedicate themselves to the company. The company also dedicated yeah. themselves to the employee. Yeah. You know, so, so a little bit more um, uh, looking out for your people. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah, you so. know, and 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 unfortunately, mm-hmm. a lot of that is lost today. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Even in the oil industry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Definitely. So you brought it up. I don't have to. Um, you're nearing the end of your career. So what's in the future for David Qualls? What uh, what comes after this? Uh. I really don't know right now, mm-hmm. I, but I'm okay with that. Yeah, and 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 I'm fortunate. <clears throat> you know, I, I looked. You know, over a period of time, Steve, uh, the, the the ending of my career in in private practice was definitely not how I, I thought it was going to lay out. Yeah. years ago. You know, I thought it would be one of these situations to where, you know, the practice would grow over a period of time and individuals would come in and then I could gradually just kind of, and that didn't happen. And I questioned that for a while, just like Mm -hmm. probably most people would, but I'm okay with that now. The, you know, the, the second to last practice or office setting that I had, you know, I kind of, walked away from mm-hmm. um, well a little over three mm-hmm. years ago you know fortunately you know had some a, a younger group that was willing to come in and continue operating their business out of that clinic so that was fine and the little satellite clinic that we had opened during that time is what I still operate now I would hope that either they or somebody else might be willing to do that same thing, mm-hmm. and it it could mm-hmm. happen relatively soon, you yeah. know, for me to walk yeah. away, you know, and and be finished with direct care, you know. I just I think that I've gotten to the point to where uh, I enjoy the one-on-one mm-hmm. interaction with the patient still, yeah. But there's still so much other stuff in the background now. Yeah. that interferes yeah. with that yeah as as i've 
told, um, you know, several people, e even, even this weekend right here, we fortunately in the area of the state where I live in, we're in an economic boom yeah. right now, you know, so uh, the, the, not necessarily the oil and gas, but the liquefied natural gas period yeah. is, is, is going huge. So we've got <clears throat> multi-billion dollar projects mm -hmm. that are kicking off. So, I, you know, I just think that either, you know, uh, could I do something related to health care? Very possibly. Yeah. But might it be something in PR or, you know, HR or risk management or whatever for yeah. some of these construction companies or something like that? I, since practice and, you know, practice has always been what I've done mm -hmm. and uh, I'm not ready to go to the house yet yeah. because I don't have any of those hobbies yeah. that people normally have. As I said, the hobby that I have is volunteer work, yeah. and I'm gonna continue to do that, you know, yeah. uh, nationally, yeah. hopefully, and locally, you know, so. Well, there's still a market for uh, gray-haired preachers down there. Isn't there, there is, a, there is, yeah, and, and, so. <laughs> and, and I don't know what might happen with that, you know. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I might, that, 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 that call that I turned away from a couple of times might Nine. end up where I am, yeah. you know. So as we wind down here, David, uh, we always ask our uh, interviewees, um, uh, give us a pearl of wisdom in relation to leadership. So if you're going to give our listeners a pearl of wisdom to finish this off, what's your pearl of wisdom for us? I, to, I, you know, to, to get involved, you know, mm -hmm. to be involved. Don't just s stay totally isolated within the practice setting that mm -hmm. you're in. Connect outside that on the volunteer basis the, mm -hmm. you know, being a volunteer has allowed me, you know, over the years to grow much more than I, you know, than I, than I ever thought, yeah. uh, that I would be able to do, you know, and now I think that at the same time, the onus then comes to myself or other people is, is that, <clears throat> Many times before individuals are willing yeah. to make that step, somebody has to make the ask. Yeah, yeah. You know, reach and out. once you reach mm -hmm. out and make that ask or whatever, and then they, that individual answers mm -hmm. that ask, then I probably would look at that kind of like with prayer. Mm -hmm. If you ask for something and you receive it, then don't forget to go back and give thanks for it. Yeah. Same way with that individual that that if you make the ask mm -hmm. for somebody to join the the volunteer ranks, mm -hmm. you know, outside of their career, whatever it is, yeah. and they do, don't go back to you know, don't forget to go back and thank them there. You know, but, and most people will say that when they volunteer at a very high level that uh, they get more out of it than they ever, um, you know, uh, you know, they received more than they gave, you know, because uh, you, you just, you, you think, oh, I don't know if I have time to give this, but what you get back sometimes is much, so much greater, it's, it's worth it, so. It has been for me, yeah. you know, I, I, I would have never dreamed, you know, mm -hmm. when, when I graduated from physical therapy mm -hmm. school in 1974, I would have never dreamed that my career would have been as successful and would have been as rewarding as it's yeah. been both within the practice setting and within the volunteer world. Yeah. So oh, awesome. you're exactly right. Well, thanks so much. You've been very, very inspiring. So uh, thank, thank you, you for watching uh, another episode of Profiles in Leadership. I want to thank VGM Advantage for sponsoring this. And uh, also go to VGM Advantage's website as well as Orange.Coaching's website to see a whole gallery of video interviews and podcasts. So. Uh, thank you very much for listening, and David, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.